Okay, hi, as uh, <laughs> Ryan told you, uh, my name is Juan Jose Zapata. I just uh, graduated from my major in chemical engineering for, uh, from the Los Andes University in Bogota, Colombia. And well, this is a great thing for me to be here to present my project. This is actually my undergraduate pro final project. It's called the Integral Methodology for Fire Sprinkler System Design Following the Performance Bay Design Criteria. It's a long name, but okay, let's go. All right, so back in 1994, the NFPA started a discussion uh, to decide whether to keep the prescriptive um, design method uh, for fire sprinkler systems or to move to the performance based design method. And of course, well, since uh, 20 years ago, very little has been done for to uh, move into the performance based design, based design method. And um, well, there's, uh, they defined five primers uh, to move forward to this uh, new kind of design method. So uh, as we can see there, we have, uh, they uh, discovered that uh, in certain fires, uh, there will be there had been a, a, some problems with the uh, uh, normal prescriptive um, design for fire sprinklers. Uh, in some cases, the agent didn't reach the fire. There was insufficient amount of agent release, inappropriate fire assist, uh, system for the fire type. And uh, so we can see there, there's some improvement we can make in this uh, kind of sp uh, fire sprinkler designs. Okay, those five primers are goals, objectives, and criteria characteristics and assumptions, fire scenarios, verification methods, and reliability. I follow those five primers uh, to create a, a method to be able to um, relate fire simulation and fire behavior uh, directly to the sprinkler systems, to be able to adjust the system uh, to be able to protect a specific scenario. Uh, so we start with the goals, objectives, and criteria. I stated that personal safety and fire extensions were the uh, primary objectives in designing a fire sprinkler system. And uh, the objectives are to uh, simulate the fire behavior and compare it with experimental research. Uh, this is validation. Um, I perform a bibliographical research for correlations describing a sprinkler system effects over fire behavior and to develop an algorithm to design an effective protection system able to comply with the design objectives, which are personal safety and fire extension. Okay, so the design concept is to relate fire um, characteristics with the protection system. Uh, these are related by uh, lab experiments, uh, which are gonna give us correlations. I use uh, the, most, the basic correlations to be able to, um, uh, to create a, um, the algorithm. And afterwards, I was able to uh, program the, uh, the code. I started with MATLAB, and then I used Visual Basic uh, to create a tool to um, provide a, um, a suggestion of a sprinkler system design. So we started with uh, the variables and correlations related to fire behavior, uh, the system properties, and the correlations that are gonna be able to relate these two um, properties to be able to uh, relate the phenomenon with uh, the sprinkler system design. We have the heat release rates, has rating, fuel properties, enclosure properties, fire load, critical time, and total time. We have activation time, activation temperature, flow duration, flow per unit area, drop diameter, pressure drop, coefficient discharge, discharge K. This is related to the sprinkler head. And the correlations are energy absorbed by the, by the spray, uh, the heat reduction, and extension time. So this is kind of the, the mind map on how I related all those uh, variables and all those correlations. This can be kind of confusing at first, but I'm gonna go uh, through each part of the, the map. I got uh, well, the fuel properties. I have the room uh, properties as well. Uh, some some uh, properties and variables related to the sprinklers directly. And everything's ha gonna have to um, converge into this uh, main uh, equation in which we're going to have to uh, set up the activation of the sprinklers just before the critical time. This critical time is related to uh, personal safety, is related to the hot gas layer, um, is being developed by the University of, to of Tokyo, 
and uh, it takes into account fire escalation, it takes into account um, ceiling, uh, ceiling jet velocity, and uh, so we can comply with the uh, objectives, the, the design objectives. Okay, so um, I have the heat profile here in a more, more detailed way. I'm going to explain how it works. Uh, we have the heat to flashover right before um, the, the second stage of the fire. Uh, we need to uh, act, set up the system to be activated just before this uh, flashover time because uh, if, we, if the fire gets to reach this point, uh, the sprinkler system is not going to be able to uh, put up the fire. So uh, we have the critical time here uh, related to a critical uh, heat. Uh, so the system should be activated just before the critical time. That should also be before the flashover time. And this could um, reduce the fire up to it uh, to extinct the fire. Uh, we have two activation times. The first one, uh, the first one, this one is related to the nominal activation time from the sprinkler. Uh, this is the bulb. Uh, which is designed to explode at a certain uh, time, as, at a certain heat, to be able to release the water. And this is the actual activation time related, it's a lag time in the activation relating to the uh, ceiling jet velocity, the response time index from the sprinkler head, and the water availability. So here's uh, like fast um, modeling how fire works. We had the entrained fire, the fire source, we have the hot gas layer, the fire plume, which is going to give us the um, temperature in which the, the sprinkler is going to be activated, have the combustion products out, and we have the three stages. The first one, in which gonna, uh, we're going to need the sprinkler to be activated at that moment before it gets to the second stage. Uh, I analyzed some um, uh, fire models to be able to predict uh, the behavior of the fire to be able to understand and to decide when to activate the sprinklers and um, then to use the code to program the, the tool. Uh, I, I, um, I uh, analyzed the standard T-square model and a simplified um, heat release rate model in which uh, the maximum heat release is 80% of the total fire duration and the, fire, uh, the flash over time is reached at 10%. Also, I have the McAfee Quintier Hackle Road model. This is a more detailed model taking into account the uh, entrained products and um, the heat release, heat release rate. Also, the hot gas layer temperature related to the rise in room temperature. Also, the heat loss in uh, wall transfer. I compare these uh, models with real life experiments. This was uh, performed by the technical, uh, techni techni uh, Technological Center in Mauritius, Spain. This live experiment. I also compared the results with the FDS um, simulator, and this is were these were the results I I obtained with the different models. So with the FDS simulation, and I was able to um, validate these results and uh, to decide to use the McAfee um, uh, model because it has 10% uh, error. Obviously, the FDS is the one that's more fitted to, uh, to these results. So, but, well, uh, for designing my tool, I decided to use the model because it's easier for me to, to do it, uh, to design the code. OK, so for the fire characteristics, we have the ceiling jet temperature, the fire uh, jet plume velocity as in Albert's correlations. Uh, for the hot gas layer, I use uh, um, you can use the McAfee model and uh, solve for it for the for the get hot gas layer temperature by um, re um, by removing the room temperature from the from the difference from the equation here. The hot gas layer height. This is also related to the critical time. I established a 10 feet or three meter um, height uh, for security reasons. That's an average uh, person's height. Uh, so can, we can assure that person is, is going to be protected uh, from the hot gas layer. For the flashover heat, I use Thomas equations based on experimental results in which flashover t uh, heat occurred, the flashover occurred at 600 uh, uh, Celsius. 
and uh, the, the heat loss is averaged to 7.8 from the total area. Okay, I also uh, try to verify this, um, these models with, a, with an experiment carried out by the NIST and compared with the CFAS predictions for real scale fires. This is a diesel spill and this is about uh, three square meters uh, from this experiment. I was able to compare those results and uh, I saw that that's an average of about 15% difference. So I thought this was, I was gonna be able to use this, um, these models to, to be able to use them with, with the tool to get the, the design. You know, as design criteria, we ha I had the critical time uh, designed by Yoshiro from the University of Tokyo and it's related to personal safety, evacuation model, fire growth, uh, considering the hot gas layer, as I told you, um, from uh, 10, 10 feet high to be able to assure personal safety. This is going to be related to the activation time from the, for, for the sprinklers. So we can comply with the equations to make sure that the, um, the sprinkler system is going to be activated before the critical time. Design criteria also, we have the uh, heat absorption as designed by Kung in his uh, correlations. Uh, this is going to relate the drop diameter with the heat absorption from the, uh, from the, from the fire. Um, so it takes into account the evaporation and the absorption <coughs> from, the, from the drops. This is going to be related to the heat absorption from each drop uh, according to the drop diameter. And this is going to be related with um, the pressure drop at the sprinkler head. And it's going to give us the K specification, which is related to the sprinkler head uh, itself. We also have the extension time. This is an approximation. This is going to give us uh, the way to know how much water must be discharged to be able to extinguish the fire. Um, I had the, the time of extinction and uh, to get the, um, the amount of water we have to use to extinguish the fire. Uh, well, I only found the uh, prescriptive criteria by the NFPA. As we see, we have six groups here. So this is like a wide range for, uh, it's not a specific, it doesn't take into account fire behavior. Uh, we have the design density liter per, per minute per unit area. That's how we know how much water we have to use and also we have to take into account that this is going to be an es only an estimation because regulation required for sprinkler systems to be shut up manually uh, from an isolated bulb so this is just a rough indication to know how much water we have to use. Also we have the uh, heat reduction as designed by Madis Koski. Uh, this is an upper limit it's going to give us like the profile on how um, the sprinkler system is going to reduce the heat from the moment of deactivation up to when the, the fire is completely extinguished. And this is how it's gonna work. We have the critical time that's gonna be related to the sprinkler activation time. And we have the sprinkler feature, which is the sprinkler bulb, which is gonna define the temperature in which the water is gonna be discharged. The system is gonna be activated. We have the heat absorption, which is going to be related to the drop diameter, which is going to define the sprinkler head, also the pressure drop at the, at the sprinkler head. We have the extinction time, which is going to be related to the spray density, and uh, it's going to give us the, the amount of water that must be discharged to extinguish the fire. And this is going to give us like the whole approach to the um, performance-based base design to get the sprinkler system uh, fully uh, established. I also was able to analyze a, uh, an experimental case in which they analyzed the effect for, of a sprinkler system in a 500 milliliter diesel fire with nine sprinklers. Uh, and these are the properties of the sprinklers that were analyzed in this experiment, um, taken, uh, made by the Swedish National Testing and Research Institute. We have the verification method. It gave me a relative error of 19.3%. So this is uh, the important thing. This is not really accurate. But what I, uh, the important thing I saw here is that the activation time is going to be the same 
so I got the right model for the activation time. So I got that right. Also, the extension time, uh, we, can, we can see that it's, um, it's going to give us a good estimation into when is the fire going to be extinguished. <coughs> I also made um, verification with different nominal temperatures, uh, with the, the ones that are commercially available. And the one that they used was uh, the 79 uh, Celsius degrees. And we see the critical time, this is the dotted line. So uh, we can see that in this case, the, the system would be activated like uh, that's about 50 seconds before uh, the critical time. So for example, 98 degree, uh, Celsius degrees is going to be right before the critical time. And maybe we can use this, uh, this temperature, this nominal temperature to make sure that the system won't be activated before it has to be activated, so we don't have property loss related to previous activation, and we make sure that we don't get over the critical time. For the hydraulic re requirements, uh, we have to assure the minimal design pressure for the lag sprinkler at the end of the grid. Uh, the water availability should be granted for the time the sprinklers are activated, and the discharge until appropriate action is assured. So as I told you, I, I started the code in MATLAB, and then I used Visual Basic to program the tool. It's called SpringFit. Uh, I used the, the logo of my university to get the, the logo for my, my tool. And we have some previously loaded fuels and materials. Also, that, those are all the input parameters. The, I used the first, the first example, the experiment, to test it. And uh, it's going to show you the, the scenario simulation, the properties. It's going to show the critical time. So we take that into account. It's going to show uh, how it's going to work, how, it's gonna, how the system is going to work, the critical time, the activation time, lag time, total uh, duration of the fire, and the heat to flash over. It's also going to suggest a, um, the properties of the sprinklers and the hydraulic uh, requirements, such as the number of sprinklers depending on the area, also uh, some references, and the pump hours, pressure drop, well, everything related to the sprinkler system design. Finally, reliability is related to uh, validation and verification of these models. So uh, we have to take into account restrictions and limitations. Finally, conclusions. Uh, the performance-based design method is a concept responding to the necessity to accomplish protection objectives. Scenario simulations are the foundation of the design criteria. Cooperation between government, academic, and uh, companies is needed to be able to uh, get this method going on. And I think there are great opportunities for, for improvement in this area. Finally, recommendations to continue with experimental research to improve uh, reliability. Uh, this research method could be applied for different areas in engineering related to construction, process design, etc. And there's a potential to develop this uh, as a design, uh, commercial design tool. We have new technologies to design products. Uh, for example, um, 3D printers are going to be able to give us the opportunity to get new designs, to get uh, specific um, objectives done uh, for this kind of uh, systems. All right, finally, I'd like to thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to be here, and I hope you like my project. <laughs>
Well, uh, I, I, I selected some of the, the correlations for their, uh, their the easy, the, they were to, to, to model and to use. But as I, as I said, we have to take into account those models' uh, limitations and restrictions in the case we want to, to use them. So uh, in the case where we have, for example, forced ventilation, we have to use the model to be able to, uh, to simulate forced ventilation. So this is, uh, this, uh, the important thing on my project is the method and the algorithm to be able to relate it to the sprinkler system design as a, as a performance-based design method. Um, so we have to take that into account. We can, uh, I could also use like, um, the FDS to take all the data and to integrate it to the design, to the sprinkler system design. But well, I had some uh, limitations in the, in the modeling and the simulations. But well, the, the important thing is to, to have the method uh, to, to be able to relate the fire phenomenon with the, with the sprinkler system design uh, in relation to relate, um, you know, accord, well, we have to take into account those limitations and we, if we would like to be more specific, we would have to change the, the, um, the correlations, the equations. Questions? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. All right.